Right, Campbell's Comments Racing catching up now with Nick Beal. Um, firstly, Nick, hello, and um, a big congratulations, mate. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Very Thanks. well. Um, not as good as you, of course, you drove your first winner, uh, Metropolitan winner, um, on Saturday night with Rockaway Beach, a gelding by down by the seaside for David Miles. That in itself, mate, congratulations. That must have been a great thrill. Yeah, that's cool. It was. He's um, been a big project, this horse. Uh, you did an interview with me after he won his maiden a little over 12 months ago, and he's starting to get a bit of race craft about him. He's still a little one-dimensional in how we drive him, but he's he's come a long way in 12 months. Uh, he is indeed. He's he, he's always been a little bit that way, and um, you know there's some conjecture sometimes if he was or wasn't going to make it. Um, he's starting to really develop into a lovely little horse, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's not not little. One thing we have done recently is um, we've let his hobbles out to sixty six inches, which has really helped his um, his tractability. He steers a lot better now, whether he was a bit jammed up or not. Um, but he's he's really coming along, and it's been a project, as I said. But he's starting to develop uh, the ring craft, and he, he wants to be a racehorse now. He, he's really he always had that aggression to be a racehorse, but now he's starting to really learn to switch on and off. The penny, penny starting to drop. Were you confident Saturday night? Did you think you could get a, a win? Um, I was really confident first up with him, actually. I know he ran second last, but I thought if they go 57 or 59, the way he'd been working, he'd be right in it with a good trail up. But they went 55 and he, he just lacked a bit of fitness and his personal time was about 56.8. So I thought with the run, he'd, he'd be right in it. Uh, just needed the right helmet to follow and then the race up front like they did for us. It, it's actually interesting to talk about helmet to follow. Uh, when I interviewed you after your first win, I think it was your first win, might have been your second win, but anyway, your first win on this horse. And that was after Kilmore. You'd, you'd given Chris Alford a little bit of head music uh, sitting on his helmet. You'd sort of kept him pretty honest in the run. He definitely seems like he's more and more tractable now. And probably you are too. You're probably growing into your role a bit. Oh, 100%. Like, I, I don't even think I've had 100 drives yet. So I'm certainly far from um, competent. I, I'm safe enough, I believe. And I hope people out there don't shit themselves too much when I'm um, in the form guide to be driving out there with them. But um, no, he, he's taught me a lot, this horse. He's taught me how to relax the hands and soften the hands and not get into a fight with them when they want to pull. And um, he's really come along too. He, he doesn't pull too hard anymore. He, he's nice and relaxed and he switches off. As, and that's that's been his biggest downfall is his tractability. And he, that's starting to come. When I, uh, the first time I interviewed you, mate, um, driving you know, was something you wanted to do. Training was definitely more on, on your radar. Um, and that, we're going to touch on that in a little bit. Is it still the status quo at the minute? Like... And is this almost something you've ticked off on your bucket list to be able to achieve? You know, you've got the photo on the wall, you'll have the video for a lifetime. Um, is it still that way with you or, or are you enjoying the driving a little bit more? You're happy to do a bit more driving? Oh, always happy to drive. Um, you know, I, I still want to drive in the best races, drive the best horses and win the best races. You know, I'd love to train, drive, breed and own a Redwood winner. That would be the ultimate goal. Um, obviously, there's other grand circuit races, but if I could do that, I'd be very happy. But no, the the training and the breeding is still priority one. Um, but driving still, I'm not going to give it away. No, that's that that is um, actually very very good. Um, you've driven six winners in your career. Um, this would have to be heads heads and shoulders the highlight. Um. Mm, yeah, it is. It's right up there. Uh, I won a race on Einstein at Yarraguen on Yarraguen Cup Day and I, I made a bit of a song and dance about that 50 from the line when I started to salute. Um, and that was always something that I wanted to do. I wanted to win a race on Yarraguen Cup Day, preferably with one that I trained and drove because um, I used to skip school growing up in Greensboro. I used to skip school and go to Yarraguen Trots on a Monday afternoon. I had the time schedule worked out and um, could get the train and the bus. And if I, if I was at the bottom of our street by four past four, I knew I was going to beat Dad home. So 
<laughs> what is your history? That was always um, always something good, but no, Saturday night definitely definitely lived with that. Was Dad? Was that out of curiosity? Was Dad at Yarra Valley Cup day? Um, no, no, Dad had to work unfortunately. But he was up in the corner. He worked. He was working in Eltham. He he could have snuck an early lunch break if he thought I was a chance, but obviously he didn't. <laughs> um, what is your backstory in the industry? Where did you come from? Um, so Dad's father was a person called Bob Beal, who trained uh, as a hobby. He had a good horse in the sixties called Ronnie's Gift. Uh, I can't remember if he if he won. I think he won 16 races, I think he won. Um, and his brother, Jim Bill, drove him, and Jim was a winner of the Victoria Oaks on uh, Johnny Yeoman's horse, Racy Reader. Oh, yeah? Yep. And Jim had a lot of success with Johnny Yeoman's, and, and he was a well-respected horseman and driver. And he, um, he drove my uncle's horse, who was a mare called Bold Promise, ran fifth in a Victoria Oaks. That was her big claim to fame. And Dad and his other brother, Rod, and, and Glenn was the trainer. They they raced her. And Dad's always had a small role as a breeder and an owner just as a hobby with his brothers and thoroughly enjoyed that. And they used to run the Yarra Bat Trials, which sadly no longer exists. They used to be a, a good batch of trials with um, Craig Turnbull just up the road and Johnny Yeomans and Gordon Rothico and Ron Francis and Mark Peace all in the Whittlesea area. It was always some good trials and everyone used to love their egg and bacon sandwiches. And um, I, I grew up there on a Sunday morning with Dad and used to hand the numbers out. And I remember me allergies played up one day. I handed the old um, saddle cough numbers out and I rubbed me eye and I got some horse hair in me eye and I, I couldn't open me eyes for the next two days so i got a couple of days off school so i really liked that and mum wrapped either because she wasn't real happy about the uh, the passionate pursuit of horse racing she she was happy that i had a, a hobby and an interest but was always worried about making a career out of it but um one of my uncles say that they remember when i was about four foot tall i was only three years old but i was four foot tall and i said i was going to be a a harness racing trainer and a driver, and that that's never wavered. Never, and you, and you, do you pinch yourself a little bit at the minute? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, I haven't had much success, and I haven't had a lot of success compared to ninety percent of the industry. I'm a very small part of the industry, but I'm absolutely loving what I'm doing and and what I've been able to achieve so far. Um, but how many people are able to? to say when they're three and four and five years old, oh, this is what I'm going to do and actually do it. You know, like um, sometimes it's money. How much money do, does someone offer you to give up on your dreams and, and work a nine to five job? Um, how much money are you willing to sacrifice to follow your dreams and stuff like that? But I, I'm very, very fortunate with what I've been able to achieve. How did you get... I'll say tied up with David Miles. Um, how did how did the association with Milesy start about? Uh, so when I was actually attending uh, school, the days I did turn up, I did VCAL in year 11 and 12. And as part of VCAL, you do a vet TAFE sort of course. And I did the Bendigo training school. I did the uh, book work online and Lee Graham, organised me to come out here and, and do the practical assessment with um, with David Stable and I had Lee and Graham and, and Clint Metzlane uh, educating me through that process at that time. How long ago was that? Well, yeah. God, I'm old. Um, <laughs> Don't throw too yeah. many books. Years ago, boy. Sorry, how many? 10 or 12 years. Yeah. 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 And and you started there. Um, did you think you were going to get a full time job with David at that time, or like was that? Did it was there always that? Because I do know you've you've come and gone a couple of times, um, one for health reasons and uh, um, and whatnot. But did you think you were going to have a full time job with Milesy? Um, not 
not at the end of the apprenticeship. The horse numbers weren't quite sustainable to hold uh, full-time positions for three people. Um, he obviously had two previous workers. So I hung around for two or three months after after the apprenticeship finished and um, then I went and worked for Henry Dwyer for three years and they shut Caulfield and I was going to have to either find another trainer at maybe Flemington or Cranbourne or Pappenham or Ballarat. Um, but David rang me up and, and offered me a, a job back and came back and I was, I was quite happy to come back and um, did about two years, two and a half years there. And then I had uh, the six month hiatus and I came back um, about 18, 20 months ago. So it's been on and off, but it's been a good association. I'll talk about the hiatus um, in a sec. We won't go right into what anyone wants to know. Just recently, though, you've been looking after David's horses while David's been in Queensland. A lot of responsibility, yourself and Caitlin, um, your girlfriend, um, to look after a team of horses. David's up there competing in group ones, winning group ones, which is what you're effectively, you know, the, that's the end result for the entire stable. But you must be wrapped with how the Victorian stable's gone, if you like, since since David's left, right right through to, to this um, gelding winning the other night. You know, like there's... You know, you guys done an outstanding job. I think you won the first day he left, I reckon. You had a winner on the first day that he, he actually hit the road um, or maybe the first day that you raced when he hit the road. But um, what, you have four or five winners while he was away as well? Uh, I don't think we had that many. We had a lot of placings, a lot of placings. Um, but I think we had the two winners. Stars Destiny won at Shepparton and then Iron Duke won at Kilmore. Um just two outstanding front-running drives by Mitt Bellman to um, to make those victories happen. And although the horses have gone well, that's um, a credit to the staff at home here that have sat behind um, in this horrible Monagita weather. We had sun for two days and used up our yearly quota, so it's been back to rain and cloud and overcast ever since. But... Um, if we didn't have David's system in place and, and the right people to implement it and Michael to drive these horses, we wouldn't have had the fortunate results that we've had either. Michael was excellent and he even came to the trials, which is not the easiest for him to come to Melton trials with time constraints. So we were very fortunate to have a driver like Mick to, um, to steer these horses for us. You don't, don't downplay the job that you and Caitlin actually were able to do. And as you said, it can be trying, but it's a lot more responsibility there as well. Um, you're looking after someone else's investment. You know, like I think sometimes you've got to be, people need to be aware of those things. And you know, I don't think, well, I know Dave was wrapped because when I rang him and asked if I could do this interview today, he was wrapped that I, I'd done it. He didn't ring me. I actually said I rang him and, and asked for it. So, I mean, that must give you a great thrill. Oh, no, yeah, no. It's, it's been a, a very good team effort from everyone, uh, as I said, David's implemented his systems and, and we've got the right staff behind, but it is it is rewarding, uh, especially with this horse. He's semi been a, a project of mine and Caitlin's to keep him relaxed and work on his tractability and, and play with him and tinker with him and, and his racing pattern and, and drive him at the races. That's that's all sort of been left to, to us. Um, David's been very uh, open and, and willing to try different things that we think would work with this horse. But when it comes to the other people's investments, he's he's obviously got the trust in us, which is is good to have, good to have, and um, to be able to to reward these people to say, well, if David's got to take a horse to Queensland, you know, he, his team's not going to lose anything by him being away for uh, a week. 10 days or, or a month in this case but if it was if it was two months um i don't think the the results would have gone downhill you spoke earlier about your allergies um you i'm not gonna say your health is poor but you do have a few health um issues you're not very fit i listened to you run there before to try and get back into reception but yeah you do have 
um, struggles with health and that can play on you mentally as much as physically um, going forward. Uh, people could turn around and say, oh, geez, Dave's lucky to have a couple, you know, yourself and Caitlin stay there. But he sent you guys away. Or I don't know if he sent you away, but you had a trip to Queensland prior to Dave going away. Does that stand you in good stead, like you said, for a very, very trying winter in Monagita and, and help you, you get through? Um, I'd imagine the weekends were pretty easy because Lucy and um, the other horse were just going diamonds. We were just going outstanding. But um, when when you're in the middle of winter and uh, the you know Wednesday, Thursdays, when you know the best highlight for your day is going to be going to kill more trots, um, it can be a bit trying. Sending you away on that holiday, probably, does it help you and help you get through the winter? Well, we went on the holiday because my cousin was getting married on, on the long weekend. So uh, that's why we went. We asked David if we could take a week leading up to and a week after that long weekend and, and go up there for the wedding. And that was that was quite fun and, and good to catch up with a lot of my family. I've got a lot of family in Queensland that don't get to see very often. Um, obviously, we work with horses. Time is, is not an ally in um, taking holidays but it was it was very good to have that that mental break it was quite refreshing no alarm caitlin did a fishing trip and decided to set an alarm at three o'clock in the morning that was the only uh downside of one morning it ruined me sleep but that was all right we um we enjoyed that and um we had a great time while we were away and went to a couple of nights on the gold coast and then up to Maroochie door and out to Maloney for the wedding. And if um, if no one's been to Maloney, it is an outstanding part of the world. Um, very, very worthwhile to, to go out there and, and just breathtaking. Um, I think they uh, definitely got their money's worth with their wedding photographer. I haven't seen all the photos, but it'll, it'll be an amazing video and an amazing photo of them. It was a great night. Do you reckon it helped you? Hold you in good stead, like I said, for the winter? Um, yes and no. Like, nice little mental freshen up. And as we know, if the horse is a mental freshen up, sometimes that's all, all you need. Maybe it's it's three days, maybe it's five days, maybe it's ten days away from work, but you, you just feel fresh and you, you're ready to rock and roll again. Um, but considering I came back to Monagita and I was on the tarmac looking at all these bastards coming back to Melbourne with hoodies and track suit pants and three layers on. I'm going, what? I, I hope this plane's delayed. <laughs> I'm too out of it or something, you know. But um, that was a bit disheartening. But, no, nah, we came back and we were energised and, and we, I think we performed a good job and an adequate job. I think you should turn around and ask him for a, another holiday. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll, we'll be taking some time off soon, um, Caitlin and I, in the... Uh, towards the end of September, we'll probably have another week or at least a weekend. We've um, just purchased a house, so that's that's our next step. We're going to have to set that up and and make that happen. And as you know, Paulie, I love the cold, so I was absolutely over the moon to be buying a house in in the beautiful part of the world that is Kilmore. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I went to the the whole screen just then, Nick. I thought, don't tell me he's about to say he's getting married. Uh, me lost pretty much over, so that'll be the next step. <laughs> You'll get into trouble for that. You'll get into... I've incurred a lifetime of debt. I might as well incur it with her for the Christmas. <laughs> um, you're in it for the long haul, mate? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. Nah. It, it, it'll be happening. The It'll be happening soon enough. Um, we'll make no, it no, all... no, not the marriage. The, the game. You're in the game for the long haul. I don't, I don't want to put pressure on you on that one. Caitlin will do enough of that. No, no, Caitlin knows the rules. And, um, we were always going to try and establish a, a life together and, and work out our careers first. And whether she was to stay with the harness horses full time or whether she wanted to pursue her equestrian lifestyle, um, that's yet to be determined on her ends. But we were sorting all of that out first and, and then we'll, we'll work together on, on the next step. Well done, Nick. Congratulations. I think, you know, Miles Racing's had a Pretty amazing month when you sit back and actually have a look at it. Um, group one winner in Queensland. The other filly was just outstanding as well um, in the way she performed up there as well. And then the stable back here. 
And I reckon for you, the highlight must have been Rockaway Peach. Um, I wasn't going to get to watch it. Uh, well, I didn't actually get to watch it, but I did see the social medias come up straight after and I was pretty chuffed for you, mate, because, uh, yeah, we have some random conversations, you and I. There's no hassles there and uh, we enjoy them. Um, and I think, well done. I think you're you're an asset to the industry, buddy. You uh, you're uh, you walk to a different beat sometimes, but it's a, it's a great beat that you walk to. Yeah, well, being opinionated always got me where I have today and um, been through good times and bad times. And usually uh, my smart-ass comments are the ones that have put me in the bad times. So I'm not normally there due to anyone else's reasonings other than my own. But um, no, I was very much enjoying how this is playing out and hopefully Big Arlo can keep... Um, keep stepping up he's gonna have to take the next step you now he's a 58 raider and he's starting to see if we'll um if he's good enough to go to town on a regular basis no mate well done congratulations great little story thank you for chatting with me and um congratulations for yourself and caitlin don't worry about that other bloke uh, the job that you guys have been able to do um over the last five six weeks has been um outstanding just put your hand up just to explain to him that you know a trip to queensland would be nice just to recharge the and get the bones a little bit more heat back into them for yourself and go from there. Yeah, no, certainly be putting me in up to go anywhere warm or forward. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nick. Cheers, mate.